It is one of the curious oddities of our time that we talk so much about the scientific method as if it is one singular entity when point of practice it is anything but. The ultimate linchpin in science is decided not by how we go about doing it, but how well our hunches, observations, and results tally with the universe we observe, and in turn how such intellectual lurches compare and contrast with other competing stratagems in terms of yielding more, not less, information. The very word science is derived from Latin and is rather open-ended and simply means knowledge. Hence, it is along these lines that the legendary and acerbic philosopher Paul Feraben long argued that science isn't really a method at all in the strict sense of that term. Rather, it is a label we use to describe the testing and verifying of differing ideas and maps we have about the world and allowing such templates to strenuously compete with one another. How we actually do science is invariably much sloppier than we might at first suspect, but which every scientist worth his or her salt knows too well. Astronomy, to take just one obvious example from the sciences, isn't so much about disproving anything as such, but rather about discovering vast new vistas. There's nothing destructive per se when Edwin Hubble looked through his telescope in the latter part of the 1920s and observed a redshift in the electromagnetic spectrum whereby light from distant stellar objects appeared to be moving away from his point of inquiry. Hubble's record only served to confirm what the Belgian priest and physicist George Lemaitre had deduced two years prior from Einstein's general theory of relativity, which is that the universe must be expanding. Yes, it is certainly the case that reductionism is part of science, but so is almost all human endeavors, including the very use of symbols from Mandarin Chinese to Sanskrit and vocal sound waves to communicate and explain complex features found in nature. The truth is that the human drive to gather knowledge and then openly compare and contrast such theoretic and observational templates is an expansive field and one which allows for all sorts of imaginative pathways. In other words, science is a quest with many methods and not just one. Analogously, science is like the Hindu god Shiva, who is often depicted with multiple arms, signifying his illustrious power to take on different forms and act in manifold ways. While it is certainly the case that one aspect of his nature is destructive, it is also true that Shiva is depicted as a transformer. Accordingly, Shiva has numerous aspects ranging from beneficent to frightening, but one of his more popular aspects is as a universal dancer, perhaps best illustrated artistically in bronze cast as Nataraja. There are in some innumerable ways to gather knowledge about the cosmos we inhabit. What makes science so powerful is that it allows for such findings to be publicly aired and scrutinized and tested, not only with the world it is trying to understand, but with other vying alternative models which differ from each other. Perhaps science's greatest contribution is that at its best, it's open to being wrong and thereby can change. An often told joke concerning Albert Einstein perhaps best reveals the tentative nature of science and its findings. A student asks, Dr. Einstein, aren't these the same questions as last year's physics final exam? To which Einstein replied, yes, but this year the answers are different. When you're thinking about something you don't understand, you have a terrible, uncomfortable feeling called confusion. It's a very difficult and unhappy business. And so most of the time, you're rather unhappy, actually, with this confusion. You can't penetrate this thing. Now, is it, the confusion is because we're all some kind of apes that are kind of stupid, working against this, uh, trying to figure out to put the two sticks together to reach the banana, and we can't quite make it, the idea. And I get that feeling all the time that I'm an ape trying to put the two sticks together. So I always feel stupid. Once in a while, though, every, the, the, the sticks go together on me and I reach the banana.